Hello my fellow YouTuber, welcome back. This is Marcelina at CashewGreens.com. This video is about growing and cooking Malabar. Today we're going to be learning on how to grow and cook Basila Alba, which is also known for Malabar or Japanese spinach. But before we continue this video, if this is the first time you discover my gardening channel, consider to subscribe. Also, don't forget, click the bell for notifications so you will first get notified when I upload new video. And if you need to see more advanced gardening ideas, just check the suggested video you see on the screen at the end of this video. So let's begin and see you in the other side. I intend to do a video on Malabar because some of my friends or maybe some of you don't know about these vegetables, how to grow them and also how to cook them. But for those of you who already know these vegetables and you already grow them in the garden, you can still listen to me too. I will give you here in this video a little bit information about these vegetables so you can grow them in the garden. Basil alba which is the Malabar spinach or Japanese spinach is an edible perennial vine in the family Basilaceae. It is native to Africa and Asia and some other parts of the country where Malabar is widely cultivated and consumed as leaf visible. Now, Malabar can be easily propagated by seeds germination and stem cuttings, which I'm going to show it to you here in this video on how to grow them from seeds and also how to grow them from stem. So stay with me until to the end, guys, because there is a lot of information that I will be sharing with you today. The soil pre preparable is moist, fertile soil with plenty of organic matter. As you can see here, my spinach is healthy and green because I give them a proper nutrients which is 14% of nitrogen. So I'm going to share this fertilizer to you guys so you can apply this fertilizer to feed to all your vegetables. The soil pH must be between 6.5 and 6.8. So the soil pH is important. Make sure that you check the soil pH and it has to be in that perfect range. It can be grown in partial shade, which increases the leaf size. However, it also loves hot, humid, full sun exposure. I keep my spinach here in this area because they get sunshine in the morning and also they get partial shade in the late afternoon. So that's why they, they, look, they grow uh, well in this area. And the problem here, here's the problem of the spinach. When they produce more blooms, leaves become bitter. And if you like bitter taste, that's fine. I like bitter, that's why I grow bitter melon. But if you don't like bitter taste of the leaves, you better control that taste. But how can you do that? Well, I'm going to share it to you here on this video, so listen to me properly. To keep them uh, to uh, control the taste of the Malabar, you need to keep the soil moist at all time. So water them as much as you can. I water them four times daily, in the morning, in the afternoon, late afternoon, and in the evening. As you can see, it is moist. The soil is moist in here. And also, you keep the environment high in humidity, but they are grown outside, so it is by nature give, gives that humidity, perfect humidity. Now, what happens if they are not moist and they are dry, so they are uh, more likely to produce more flower and they produce more seeds, and you don't need that because if they produce more flower, then it would change the taste of the plant. The Malabar will grow in height of 5 to 6 feet because they're vine, so it is necessary that you need to give them a proper support. When it reaches that height, they become leggy and it doesn't look good, so you, have to, you can cut them down and uh, grow the stem. Again, then you have a, a rotation of your crops. So, that is how you grow the malabar all right so we know how to grow the malabar we grow them from seeds and also we grow them from steam now before we grow these vegetables let's understand the nutritional value that these vegetables offer to us now malabar contains high in vitamin a vitamin c iron calcium and it has also a good amount of protein 
and also a good source of magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, another good reason why should you eat Malabar? Well, Malabar, uh, Malabar spinach, is that it has a good amount of antioxidant and gluten. Now, I have, I was laughing with this when I told my partner here, you need to eat a lot of Malabar so you can get a lot of gluten. And he said, what the heck is gluten is about? <laughs> so gluten, you probably, it's not a gluten, okay? So it is gluten. Lutein is uh, in Latin word, which is lutus or yellow. It's a yellow pigmentation that only synthesizes in plants. So it is a type of vitamin A. You can see that in egg yolk and also in in some fatty food and animals. So that is the lutein that you can get from that. And it is a vitamin that it's called carotenoid. So it is synthesized between the production of chlorophyll between the plants and the sun. And I'm not going to go into in depth on that because it, it, it would be a lot. It would, be, it would take too long for this video. So I just give you a little bit of uh, nutritional value here. So it is high in fiber. Now the, the lutein that is uh, present in the plant and it is again it is synthesized by, by this you know synthesized by between the plant and the sun now again it is a uh, vitamin a uh, that's called the carotenoid and this natural occurring chemicals that is synthesized in plants it is helpful because it keep your cells from aging so if you are trying to get young you might have to eat a lot of plenty of vegetables especially malabar or kale or broccoli or any kind of greens that contains high amount of gluten so now we know how to grow them and we know the nutritional value so let's go ahead and grow this vegetable so meet me in the other side
in the Philippines, so this is my harvest guys, in the Philippines we cook a lot of alagbate, so this is our main vegetable dish, we cook them with coconut and sometimes we just cook them plain and we add sardines, but you don't have to use uh, coconut if you don't like coconut, so I'm going to stir fry this one and serve to my family tonight, with, uh, I'm going to pair it with salmon. So I'm going to grill the salmon with season with uh, oregano. So this is delicious, guys. And the high, high in nutritious value is the malabar that has a purple steam like this. It's high in antioxidant. So this is how you prepare your malabar. For those of you who don't know about malabar, it's almost like spinach, but the the taste is like have this uh, earth taste, but they're delicious. So just take out and this one, I'm going to grow this steam so I can have more of this. It's good to have uh, vegetables in your garden and I would encourage you guys to grow food, experiment your vegetables, and vegetable is good for you. Okay, so I have all this cut. Look at that guy. It's a lot. So I'm going to rinse this and then put it in the frying pan. Okay, so... Here is again another cooking guys, so I'm going to stir fry my malabar, so I don't put any, you can uh, add shrimps or pork or beef in malabar, but this one is just strictly, strictly vegetable, and in my country we use this one as otan, <laughs> we call it otan in the, in the Philippines, so I have the uh, minced garlic in here, and I have this onion, and I use this uh, the same uh, thigh this is a uh, fish sauce I always use fish sauce because it adds flavor and this is semi it's pure oil and I'm going to cook this one here you can uh, cook malabar or you can eat them in salad you can eat raw but I don't eat raw malabar i mostly cook them sometimes i make them soup so i always use canola visible sometimes olive oil and to put all this this onion so i keep harvesting my onion guys if i cook So I use this sasan, I like this sasan, and sometimes I look. I also uh, want the ham, this is goya, and it has this different flavor, and that's what I like about it. So after you cook your, your malabar, but just keep in mind that malabar, you don't need to cook them thoroughly because otherwise it has this uh, sticky substance, like a hibachus. And it doesn't look great. So they're very uh, sticky if you overcook them. So I have this malobar in here. I already rinse and wash. It's nice to cook outdoors, guys. You know, you can just experiment your vegetables. And for those of you who are vegetarian, well, you need to start growing some vegetables. And if you grow them, you eat them fresh. Okay. I'm going to cover this. And this is good with uh, over rice. So sit that for a while. Okay, you have to check your malabar. Smell good. A 
have to add some fish sauce. I like to add malabar with a shrimp, you know, dry shrimp or you know like shrimp paste but my partner doesn't want to eat with those he said it doesn't smell good so I have to just minimize my sauce in here So I add this as uh, pure sesame oil and this one would add flavor to the malabar and I add a little bit of water here you can add to tomato if you like the tomato but I just make it simple so this is good Oh, smell good. Look at that. That looks good. So this is high in potassium, high in magnesium, and phosphorus. So if you guys need Malabar, check our site, Cashew Greens, or you can visit Etsy on Cashew Greens. We have our vegetables down there, and check our Malabar if you want Malabar. Malabar. This is a delicious vegetables in the garden, and not many people know about Malabar, so that's why... I decide to create a video today so you know how to grow them and how to cook them so you can cook any 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 recipe of malabar you can fry them some people fry them and put a lot of spicy chili look at that that's so good So again, don't overcook your malabar because it becomes sticky. And I add my goya. This is sesan. Get a little bit more flavor. And also it adds color to my food. And I'm going to pair this with rice you can pair it with steamed rice or you can have a fried rice okay so that's cook that's how you cook malabar Simon guys look at that that's awesome so I season it with a good seasoning I have the oregano in here and some salt and pepper I'm going to give this to my GBBG so here she is we had the mashed potato she he likes mashed potato and here so we also have rice in here and I will had my papa palm how he thinks about the malabar what do you think about the malabar salt. well <laughs> i don't put too much salt because it's not good for you especially if you had a high blood pressure so this is the rice uh, it tastes it's good more, yeah it tastes delicious it's got more texture to it than spinach yeah you want to try bbg you know what you forget, BBJ? Is to pray a blessing. Now you have to start before you eat. My father always tell me that you cannot make food 
and you have to so blessing. <laughs> okay, so he doesn't want it. All right, so we're going to eat, and this is an awesome dinner. <laughs> 